In this video, I'm gonna show you how to measure the viscosity of some liquid using an Oswald uh, viscometer. Um, our setup consists of a water valve, uh, consists of a timer to record the flow time, consists of a thermometer to check the temperature of the water valve, and as well, the most important part is the actual viscometer, which is um, shown here, over here. To start the measurement, um, the first step is to set up the viscometer. Another thing you need to do is to write down what viscometer you are currently using to perform your experiment. For In this case, we are looking at a V194 viscometer. Uh, why it's important to write down what the viscometer is used? Because the flow time of each viscometer is different. Means the the inner diameter of this the tubing inside the viscometer is different from one viscometer to the other. To set up the viscometer, you need to use a screwdriver, and then you need to first initially unscrew this part make it loose and then try to fit this viscometer into into this holder as seen over there and then next step would be to make to tight the holder on the viscometer by turning the screw clockwise however it is very important not to over tight the screw otherwise you are risking to break this viscometer. Right? So right now it looks very good to me. And another thing you want to do is as well holding the entire assembly um, you know, um, tightly instead of just holding it on the top of a, of a holder. Again, you are risking to let it drop, right? So the next step of this, um, to, to perform this experiment is to of course, turn on this water bath. The water bath can be turned on using this main switch. All right. Next, you're gonna turn on the thermometer, right? Thermometer, which is shown over here. Uh, I prefer centigrade, so I'm gonna hit centigrade, um, and then right. So you see right now we're having a temperature of 21.4 for this water bath. Um, in this experiment we're going to measure the flow time or the, we want to determine the viscosity of different liquid at 25 degrees. So what we have to do next is actually heat up the water bath. To heat up the water bath you need to first make a selection of what temperature range you you are looking at, right? So we're looking at 25 right now. So we, this looks good to me. And then next, you need to make sure that this lamp is on. The heat lamp is on when the water bath is heating, right? So in case the he heating doesn't happen, you need to turn this knob counter uh, clockwise to make this lamp goes on. Every time the lamp is on, means the uh, water bath is heating, right? So what you have to do next is just to wait until the temperature reaches 25 degrees before we proceed with the experiment. So while we're waiting for the water bath to reach the temperature we want, 25 degrees, we're gonna proceed with setting up the experiment, right? So after we have attached the holder to the viscometer, Next thing we're going to do is to insert the entire assembly into a water bath. Like that. In the next step, we're going to fill this viscometer with the liquid we are looking at. In, in any viscometer experiment, the first thing we have to do is to measure the flow time of unknown liquid such as water. Right. So we're using water as a standard because the viscosity of water at 25 degrees is known, very well known, is given. 
So we have first to record the flow time of water at least three times to determine a so-called B constant. The B constant is characterizing each viscometer. This v B constant will be calculated for each viscometer in order to determine the viscosity of the unknown, right? Such as our alcohol or a polymer. So I'm gonna now add a liquid into this viscometer from the wider side of the tubing. So I'm gonna add now water into this viscometer and only like a few ml is needed. And now you can see this bulb is now filled with water. So now the temperature has reached 25 degrees. We want to maintain this temperature. To maintain the temperature we have to turn off the heater. So you have to turn this knob counterclockwise so that the lamp turn off. Means the heater is not heating anymore. In that way we can maintain the temperature of our water bath. To do the experiment we're gonna attach this pipeter to the narrow end of a viscometer and then we're gonna draw the liquid in this case it's water from the left to right hand side beyond both mark lines and then we're gonna detach the pipette the pipette and then let the liquid going down again we're gonna start the timer when the liquid reach the top line and then we, we're gonna wait until the liquid reached the bottom line to stop the timer again. That time we just recorded is the so-called flow time of this viscometer. Using the flow time and using water, we can find the B constant of this viscometer. That B constant later is then used to find the viscos viscosity of our unknown liquid, of an alcohol, of a polymer. All right, let's do it together. So I'm gonna attach the pipette to the right hand side of the viscometer, and then I'm gonna draw the liquid up. Sometimes it's required for you to detach the pipette and then draw, keep uh, keep drawing afterwards. Alright, so now you can see the liquid is going up and then, yep, it's now passing both lines. Now I'm going to detach the pipette, pipette and then now we're going to wait until the liquid reach the top line before we are starting the timer. Alright, so liquid is now coming down, coming down and stop. Okay, I just started the timer. The timer has been just started. As you can see, it's now running. And then now what we have to do is we have to wait until the liquid reach the bottom line before we are stopping the timer. So this measurement has to be repeated, as I mentioned, at least three times in order to find a average flow time of this um, standard, right, water. Um, and then that's going to help you to find your B constant, right. After you finish water for calibration of this viscometer, you then need to rinse this viscometer with acetone. Rinse it really well and then let it dry in the oven at ar about 40 degrees until, until it's fully dry. And then after that, you're gonna take it out of the oven, let it sit in this water bath for at least 10 minutes to let it cool down. And then you're gonna next do your measurement with your liquid, your unknown. For example, in Pecan Lab, we're doing this experiment with a series of alcohol, but the experiment can as well be done with a polymer solution, right? And then as well for this experiment you have to do at least three you have to record at least three flow time in order again to determine our average flow time all right so now you can see that we are ready to stop our timer right 
the flow time of water for this viscometer is 117.3 seconds. Right? So this is our very first flow time. And as I mentioned, now you need to redo this experiment at least two more times. And as well, make sure that the temperature of your water bath is in the range. Right? So some small fluctuation is fine, right? but make sure that the temperature is not too high. Now we can see that the temperature is 25.2 instead of 25.0 we actually have set. Which is fine, some variation of 0.2. Alright, so this is a short demonstration of this experiment um, to measure the viscosity of different liquid. Now I'm going to show you how to shut it down, how to clean up everything. To clean up, to finish the experiment, you first have to turn off your water bath, uh, turn off the um, thermometer, and then next thing you're going to do is you're going to take out your viscometer out of the water bath, and then you're going to detach the holder from the viscometer. Make sure you hold it tight, so the viscometer is wet, so it's kind of slippery. And then now you can discard your liquid. In this case, it's just water, so you can dump it down the sink. And then now it's time for you to use acetone um, to rinse this viscometer really well, and then put it into the oven at about 40 degrees for drying. And yeah, that's all. I thank you very much for watching, and have a good one.